What's up guys, it's like the fourth time I've made this video and I didn't like the other version, so hopefully this one turns out better. So I wanted to show you guys what the rifle actually looked like after I put it all back together, or put it together, and kind of give you my opinions and quick initial thoughts on it before I take it out to the range. Uh, first things first, I'm not sponsored by this company, but I've used this, this bag quite a few times. This is actually my third one, I think, and uh, I really like them. So if you're looking for a, a rifle bag slash shooting mat, I highly recommend this. I think I have a link uh, to it below down in Amazon, but essentially folds up trifold, and folds out as a shooting mat. So you can take this anywhere you want. I usually keep a bolt action in here. Keep some rounds over here. It's got some zippers in here. Uh, you can put tools, notes, anything you want in there. It works out really well. I've actually carried this, uh, the longest I've carried it was 12 miles in Colorado. And while the straps are a little thin, um, it worked out. Um, I, I like to strap things to the molly, put like a fanny pack around it with some snacks and some water, clip things on works out perfect so again just food for thought if you need a bag highly recommend this again i'm not sponsored or anything i just like the bag all right outside of that here is the bagara finally got it all put together excuse the cheap bipod on a side note if you haven't if you're still using cheap bipods go buy a harris i bought one um about two years ago and never looked back i kept this one just because um i like to use it for staging and actually gave my dad my harris but um, yeah, use a, use a good bipod. It's wor well worth it. And you can definitely tell the difference in weight and quality immediately. So let's run through this. Front to back, I got the precision armament brake on here. As you can see, I've used this on a couple different calibers from 6.5 up to 300 wind mag. Works really well. I'd love to put a can on here, but where Shay's going next, uh, you have to register guns. So I'm not really sure if I wanna get a can just yet and I'm kind of trying to figure out which rifles and pistols I'm even gonna bring there just because of how it works there. So we'll see, but I'm definitely bringing this because I do want to go hunting. There's a lot of hunting opportunities and it's gonna be perfect for that. From there, you got the Bagara, Bagara Pro. Everything else is uh, very similar to the other versions, except obviously with the Pro, you get the Cerakote that's gray, you get the black stock, which matches I don't know what in the field. I really like the wilderness colors personally. It is a stainless six, number six barrel, stainless action, stainless bolt, fluted, which I really like for some reason. Uh, quick note, if you do get the Wilderness, make sure you get a 2021 model and up because they do come with the fluted bolt if it is a 2021 and up. So just food for thought with that. From there, it's got the Trigger Tech Trigger. I like the flat ones. I don't know exactly which model's in here. I had one of the better ones in my Remington 700. Great trigger, love the adjustment, so I'll use it. Uh, I am using a Tally 20 MOA scope base. I heard a lot of good reviews on it. It was pretty inexpensive. I needed an 8 to 40 scope rail because the pros, that's what they use, not the, the 6 by whatever it is. So I went ahead and used that. It works. It's made in America. Had a lot of good reviews, so I'm checking it out. Got the Vortex scope rings. I am using mediums. You could get away with lows, as you can see up here, as long as your field of focus allows it back here. So I don't know if you can see that, but I like where the scope is right here. And there's not a lot of room between the base and the bottom of the scope. So if I went low, I'd have to move the scope back and I like where it's at. So I'm just gonna leave it exactly how it is. This is the Vortex 6 to 24 by 50 HST. I got the box over there. It's the Viper PST, I'm sorry. Great scope for the money. And for me personally, I think it's gonna be perfect because one of my primary goals with this rifle is not to just become a great shooter, great shooter, um, but to actually really learn how to use a scope to its full potential. And that's one thing I really lack on. I wanna know how to be able to make adjustments with it all over the place, adjust my shots at further distances, and then be able to put it back to zero really quickly. So that's kind of my real goal with this rifle, learn how to do that. And that's why I picked this up in 6.5 Creedmoor. I actually wanted the 6.5 PRC, but I couldn't find ammo for that anywhere. And since I'm not reloading just yet and where we're going, there's not gonna be a lot of ammo options, I don't think. I figured since I have 6.5 and it's pretty easy to find, I'll stick with the Creedmoor. The barrel will last longer and it's gonna be perfect for what I wanna do. I do plan on getting the Wilderness again in 300 PRC. I think that's a great caliber. So I'm gonna test, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test out the PRC rounds uh, with the 300. Other than that, uh, I'm trying to think. Everything else is pretty much as you see it. Like I said, I'm gonna toss on a Harris bipod and uh, go from there. 
A couple things that I did notice overall, um, is it worth going with the Pro? I think that depends on you. I really like the Wilderness. Again, I just kind of wanted to test this out. One thing that I did notice was I don't think the action is as smooth as I would have liked it to be. Maybe it'll break in, maybe I just need to oil it up a bit and it'll get better. But it seemed to have a little bit of drag compared to the other two versions that I had. So, I'm, uh, and I'm kind of just nitpicking here, but it's still bizarre, still great, but it just has a little bit more drag on it than I kind of, a little friction, a little more than I thought it should. Uh, then from there, the bolt knob, as I mentioned in the other video, is not removable, just because it's, I guess it's just part of the action, but just kind of something to note, because I was going to put a bigger one on here. Other than that, the last thing I really noticed besides that was everything has been really good, but one thing I did notice is it has black flakes all over the rifle and inside the action and on the bolt. I don't know if that's from the Cerakoting or from the, the stock or what that is, but I really got to clean this out again because it's not like, it's not horrible, but it's just kind of, I'm, I'm really curious on what the flip all that is. I got a huge one right here on the top of the action. But anyways, other than that, great looking rifle. I dig the colors. Again, I don't know where it would camouflage into, but um, I think it looks really cool. Uh, so, so we'll kind of see how it works out from there. That's why, again, I like that wilderness. Other than that, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm really looking forward to taking it out and shooting it, having a blast with it. I think it's going to be perfect, just like the other ones I've had. I've never had an issue with the Pagara. They've all shot extremely well, way better than I can shoot. comes with a little card showing it shoots like 0.44 as an average. Um, again, that's, that's way better than I'll be able to shoot it. And I'm really just looking forward to getting it out, learning the scope, and having a good time with it. So I'll show you what it looks like at the range, um, depending on where I can get it out to, and we'll go from there. Again, thanks for watching. We'll have some fun with it and go from there. As you can see, I also picked up a new uh, product, 75, MX, 75 DT400 uh, that I came across. I was looking for an MX475, so I'll, I'm still looking for one of those. But uh, cool little score. All right, well, thanks again, guys. Hope this video turns out better than my other ones and I actually post this one. And I uh, hope you guys are doing well. See you on the flip side.